it's great to see you here today once again for Saturday Musings. I haven't done a Saturday Musings for the last couple of months. I've taken a bit of a break, but I thought I could step back into things. And this first topic I'm going to be tackling, it was really provoked from a discussion I had in the clubhouse. Um, the clubhouse, for those of you who don't know, is a new app you can get in your iPhone, and it is phenomenal. You can go along here, people speak. Like the other day, I heard Mark Zuckerberg example, uh, speak, and it was absolutely fascinating, some of the things he had to say, but also the interaction between uh, people who are allowed onto the stage and so forth like that. It, it was great to see. But um, uh, what I want to talk, share with you today is a difference that, it, between wisdom and intelligence. A lot of people don't understand that difference. And they understand that there is such a difference between wisdom and intelligence. Um, I've seen some amazingly smart people do some incredibly dumb things. Yeah. And uh, that's really, that highlights uh, an intelligence from wisdom. And I remember many, many years ago, I used to play Dungeons and Dragons, and you have the attributes strength, constitution, wisdom, intelligence, charisma. And... Uh, and it really highlighted, in that, even in that game situation, that wisdom is very different from intelligence. And wisdom comes from, quite often, from inputting a lot of things into yourself and spending the time to improve yourself. Intelligence is just like knowledge and so forth like that. And in many respects, wisdom is how do you apply that knowledge. And so intelligence is very important. Because you don't have any intelligence, it's not too good. But having some wisdom is how do you apply the knowledge in that situation is very is incredibly important. And so putting into yourself constantly, yes, you'll get more and more intelligent over time, whether it is doing what Abraham Lincoln did, and he sat down and he read the dictionary because he wanted to improve his vocabulary. Or you want to do, um, like you spend a whole lot of time uh, researching. Uh, like Thomas Jefferson did. Uh, whatever it is that, that you're going to be inputting into your t intelligence is very important, but the wisdom is knowing you should do so. Yeah, so uh, one of the things I instituted um, many years ago, I, I went on a quest, and uh, the quest when I was in my 20s, and the quest was really to understand life. And so I began reading lots of books on the topic of life and really what was it all about. And the, the, the conclusion I came to was the adventure of life is understanding who you are. And in my case, who I was and who I am. And to understand what it is that actually makes Michael tick and to go and explore that fully. So when I came to that conclusion from that time, I thought, well, I better dedicate myself to this. And over time, I began to see that separation from intelligence and wisdom. Uh, one of the things I, I have learned is that when you look at other people, um, you can learn so much from them. You can learn what not to do and what to do. Um, I've seen people in business over the years and I've gone, oh my gosh, they're, what an incredible idea. And so, so I gained wisdom from them. But I've seen other people think, seriously, that's going to be a disaster. And sure enough, it was a disaster. And I've learned from them as well. Um, so it's also be able to input into, your, into yourself from different sources, whether it be books, whether it be um, whatever it is. And I remember I came across a, a, a book, it was called The Richest Man in Babylon. If you haven't read it, it's really short, you should go and read it. it it's a really, it talks about how to become financially free and from this perspective of a person back in the, the Babylonian times. And um, the, one of the, the, the important things I gleaned out of that book was this. If you want to understand about jewelry, don't go and speak to the baker, speak to the jeweler. If you want to understand about uh, something about um, meat, don't go and speak to the bricklayer, go and speak to the butcher. So what was that about? There was, a, there was an aspect of wisdom uh, of that, which is really think about who is inputting into your business, into your life, and be very careful 
about who, who you're allowing to input. And then when you seek advice, seek advice from the right people. Like so many people seek advice about legal issues by going to their friend. Their friend may be a lawyer, that's great, that's fine, but go and see a lawyer. Or they seek financial advice and uh, they, they, go, uh, they go and see uh, someone down, uh, down the street that they bump into versus going to see their accountant about financial and tax advice. Or they go and do things such as launch a new business and they speak to people that have had a job all their life. Go and speak to an entrepreneur. Go and get their input. What does it mean to launch a new business? What does it mean to be able to move forward? That's called wisdom. And to be able to, to ascertain who you're gonna let speak into your life. For me, for instance, there's actually very few people that I give permission to speak into my life. And I actually deliberately do that. Uh, I, go, I went out to, to a number of people and I said, I give you permission to speak into my life. In other words, when I behave like, like a complete idiot, I want you to tell me, hey, Michael, you may not want to do that. And that's actually a really important thing to do. It's a check and a balance. And we all need checks and balances in our life. And it's through wisdom that you put these in place. And sometimes you need to be very deliberate. So, so there I was in the clubhouse the other day and uh, someone said, you know what? I really want to be mentored in domains. That's what I want. I'm new to this industry. I understand what's going on. I hear there's all these opportunities. I want to be mentored in the domain industry. And uh, I, was, I heard one person after another say, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. There was, was a room full of people that are relatively new to the industry. You know, there's actually wisdom in that. What they're actually saying is, you know what? I don't know everything. Therefore, I need to have someone speak into my life on this topic. So the challenge then comes this, who's going to do it? And why would they do it? Because mentoring someone is a really, really big commitment. Yeah, so, or, or you can go along and do classes and that sort of stuff and gain knowledge over time from yourself. Yeah, so in the domain industry, when I look at the domain industry, there's not very many people that understand the different aspects of it, of how to make money and how it all works from a technical level and a business level. And there's very few people like that. So the challenge I think for this group of people saying Clubhouse is how do you find someone who understands all these different nuances of an incredible thing like a domain name, internet domain name. But wisdom and intelligence. They're embarking and they're make, beginning to make wise choices. Uh, I remember my father used to say to me, as someone who says they know everything is wrong, no matter, and I don't care who they are. And he really drilled that into me. What he really was saying was this, is let's imagine I stuck my hand up and said, hey, I can help you, I can mentor you guys. I know everything about domain names. Immediately I say that, I'm wrong. I don't know everything. Why is that? Because no one can know everything, which means there's wisdom in being open and being prepared to learn from a person who's new to a person who's been in the industry for a long time. There's learning on a two-way sense, and we always must be open to learn. One of the fundamental principles I spoke about in uh, previous musings is the fact that learning is a key principle in my life. Because you know what? I don't know everything. Like domain names are so big, that whole topic, let alone the internet, let alone business, all that sort of stuff. But what I can do is share what I do know. And um, so wisdom, and uh, wisdom is an incredible thing. And uh, there's, there's a saying that uh, if you have teenagers, you'd appreciate this, is that teenagers go through a time when mum and dad are completely stupid, they can't stand them, what's going on, they don't know anything. But as the teenager gets older, it's amazing how much smarter their mum and dad become. Yeah, so, which there's an aspect of, I hate to say it, being there, done that. And uh, you learn a lot from actually doing. One of the things that I, I took a position in many years ago, I think it was about 1994 or thereabouts, is that uh, I, I saw this thing called the internet coming on the scene and all that sort of stuff. 
And I, I'm a firm believer, if you want to understand something, become it. Just leap in boots and all and just solve the problems one after the other. As Matt Damon in The Martian said, you know what, you solve one problem at a time. If you solve enough problems, you get to come home. <laughs> yeah, and it was a bit like that where um, I, I, was, I was wanting to solve, uh, solve one problem at a time. And I learned so much through that experience. I found it an ISP. And uh, it was an amazing experience, in fact. Um, and I really learned a phenomenal amount um, about the fundamentals of the internet, which puts me in good stead for today. Yeah, so sometimes you just need to become whatever it is you need to do and just solve one problem at a time. And th there's real wisdom in that. Um, and the, the other thing is for people that have been there, done that, um, it's, they, they bring a different perspective. Uh, they really do. And I, I remember, um, it, like, I, I've been a business now for myself for about 40 years, um, which is a long, a long time, dare I say. And uh, it's funny, I, I get lots of business opportunities come across my deck, desk and I see them and I, and it, it, within a few seconds I can go, yeah, that's just rubbish, that's a stupid idea. Like, where's the business model? And, and, I, and I find I do that because, I can do that because I've had 40 years of just looking at things. Um, I remember many years ago, there was a, a couple of guys wanted me to invest in their business. And I thought, well, yeah, I'm happy to be traveling through the area of the world at the time. I'll drop in and hear what they got to say. And I sat down with them. I said, where's your financials? And they said, oh, well, we have, don't have any financials at the moment. I said, okay, that's a bit odd. Then you must have a cash flow. No, no, we don't have that. Do you have a business plan? No, no, we don't have one of those. So I spent the next <laughs> couple of hours that night just developing a whole stack of things very quickly for them um, to put it together. And it took me no time at all. Yeah, it really, really did. And um, they're very grateful. I did not invest in the business, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, there's a wisdom of that too. Was a, um, don't go where angels fear to tread. Um, but you know, it's, it's something about talking to someone who's been there, done that, which can really help you out in the business world or your personal life. So if you're having troubles in your marriage, go see a marriage counselor. I, at some stage in your journey with that person, you actually love them enough to say, I'm gonna go and spend the rest of my life with you. And if things are starting to go off the rails, then work on, work on the problem. Don't work on the person, work on the problem. And you know what, here's a word of advice for you, some wisdom, you can't change them. You can only change yourself, which, and also your reactions to them. Um, which brings up a, a, an interesting point in business as well, is that you cannot change what a competitor does. You cannot change what the world is doing. If it's changed, such, such as with um, COVID as an example, you can only change how your business responds to it. That's all you can do. You can only change the things that you actually have direct influence over. So stop worrying about the rest of the world and look at what you can actually do. Too many people worry about so many other things. Like you've only got to go into a domain name forum and you see these people in there and there's some great people in there, don't get me wrong, but some other people, you know, I sometimes think they haven't taken their medication today because they say a whole stack of things and they, they want to go along, change this and they want to change that and everyone's corrupt and all this sort of stuff. I think, mate, just focus on your own business. Just get that um, together. Intelligence wisdom. I can know a lot about the internet and be very unwise, or I can know a lot about the internet and build wisdom. Which brings me to my final point. One of the things that I do every single day is I spend uh, about 30 minutes inputting into myself and getting a diversity of inputs. I then really think I spend, I allocate time to think. Yeah, one of the most undervalued activities we as business owners um, can do, or as we as people can do, is really pause and think. Spend some time thinking and trying to make a wise decision. What does it say? Get a multitude of counselors, and then once you have the multitude of counselors, make your own decision. 
but to, to actually do that and get the multitude of inputs into your life and make your own decision, whatever issue you're wrestling with, you need to allocate some time to think. If you're making some important decisions in your life, ask yourself, have you really thought about it? There's times in my life, normally it's about every couple of years, um, I just need to go away and I need to walk down a beach or just spend some time uh, just completely by myself to think. That's what I do. I just think and I begin to focus in on what's really important and what's not as important in my life. I begin to focus on, okay, where there are a whole lot of distractions in my business, where's the real opportunities? I begin to think about is this just like a pie in the sky type situation versus, you know, there's an opportunity over here which is steak on the plate where you wait. Yeah, so I really begin to think. So every day I do that. Um, well, 99% of days I spend time allocated to thinking. There's wisdom in that. And I just pause my life every morning and I allocate that time to think which uh, I should, I said there was the last point, I just want to raise one more thing. And as one of the things that I, I read recently, in one of these times, by the way, is the, the fallacy of a to-do list. If you've got a to-do list, my guess is you have a whole heap of things on your to-do list that have been there for a long time and they'll never get done. The reason why is you actually haven't allocated time to them. So I actually threw away to-do lists. I said, to-do lists, no, I'm not gonna even pay attention to them. What I will do, if it's important, I will allocate time to that particular activity. And if I don't have enough time to allocate, then guess what? Something else either needs to move because it has a higher priority, or I just go and say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I'm sorry, I just can't do that. And there's wisdom in that. So wisdom comes from many different sources. And the, the thing I f would highly recommend is you spend some time, just yourself, it's time to think every day. Be very disciplined about it. Get up earlier. Um, uh, and that won't kill you, trust me. Just get up earlier and spend that time to think about what you're doing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this Saturday Musings on intelligence and wisdom and that there's been some wisdom in there for you. God bless. Have a great week.